Hello traders, welcome to the weekly outlook and setups volume 236. Ilya here, you know what we're going to be doing, having a look at the market, how it developed this week, what opportunities we had, and most importantly, what we can expect for the upcoming week. Now, after this week, we're finally getting some direction after CPI came out. And then on Friday, we also had a great confirmation uh, for the potential continuation of the market. So within next week, we actually are going to have very clear targets on the majority of the pairs. So in this video, we're going to dive deep to potential forecast where the market could be going next week and to see if we can actually capitalize on that. So let's get into it. Of course, before we jump into the technicals, we would like to cover the news as well. Now, what we can see is that already on Monday, we are having retail sales, this index right there, and also retail sales. So that is very nice. 3.30 New York could definitely be volatile already on Monday. Then on Tuesday, we start with GBP. We have a lot of Canadian news, so I don't trade CAT. It doesn't interest me as much. Also USD, GBP speech, FOMC speech right there, and also Mr. Powell speaking on Tuesday quite late. So Tuesday could be tricky because if that speech is quite late during the day, that is what the market is essentially going to be waiting for. Uh, but trading the pound on Tuesday looks pretty good. Wednesday, also pound, CPI paired with a speech from uh, um, England's Bank of England's governor quite late as well which is not good when they do those speeches late and then we have unemployment claims here we have some aussie news also some usd speech here and then finally ending the week with retail sales for the pound now we don't have any euro news we we i do see a lot of gbp news by the way for this week so the pound could be making some sort of a move now euro we are technically trading euro usd so we should be trading mainly uh, the us session because what I have found out, by the way, is, uh, for example, this week, I did trade a lot of London because that is my main session. But when we don't have news in London, then London tends to chop around. It does make a very quick move at the beginning of the day, but then it ends up chopping around until the news of New York actually come out. So if you don't have anything in London, then, of course, protect your energy for the news that are to be coming in New York. So... Looks like a pretty nice week. There is nothing like very huge, something to be worried about apart from Mr. Powell's speech here. So let's get onto the charts. All right, here we are with the DXY. You might be noticing that I'm on a small screen today. Uh, it's because I'm recording a brand new course, a very big revamp that is incoming for the fanatics. And I didn't want to change the settings to my big screen. But let me know if you actually like this could actually be appearing well on your side. So having a look first on the monthly time frame of course we do repeat this every single weekly outlook but we were reacting from this monthly imbalance lower the market tapped in looked like it wanted to reject then march tries to push down fails actually sweeps here the previous candle low previous monthly low and right now we can see that actually this month is already headed higher where is it headed for well potentially this liquidity and there is nothing much to stop price from actually reaching this high. So we pretty much have this space here, which is around the 130 pips to potentially capitalize on. And that's it. Now, on the weekly time frame, we also had that bullish confluence in the form of that weekly bullish imbalance. We tapped it here last week. And then this week, we actually took out the previous weekly low and we started expanding like crazy. Now, also, if you refer to the left here, we don't have anything. We don't have any kind of clear supply zones the only supply zone we had was that one which actually got tapped here that caused the reaction lower and right now there is nothing to stop price from potentially reaching that monthly high which is pretty much building a beautiful bias all right now we had this daily imbalance that i was quite surprised that the market did not trade into on friday so we had that very nice thursday candle i did trade on thursday took a break even didn't move as much. I actually did expect for the market to move very sharply on Thursday and then consolidate on Friday. But it did exactly the opposite. Friday opened and it was a very big pump all day without any sort of a pullback. So currently, again, as I said, we are very fast track going towards that high. There are a couple of areas to potentially cause the market to reject. The first one is this daily high here. We're having a nice swing high. The second one here, you can see we have a couple of imbalances so 
well not a couple we have this guy here and then we have this gap so those are all areas this gap here those are all areas that the market could potentially tap into and give us a reaction so i want to be aware of those because i want to know where i can potentially expect the reaction so i can wait for that pullback and then to potentially continue jumping on the train now we're having a very massive expansion already on friday so there are two things that could happen we could potentially make a new daily imbalance if we do not cross this line so of course if we do cross this line on the next candle there is not going to be a new daily bullish imbalance so we might head for the lower one but if we do make one on monday then i would be really happy to potentially trade it on tuesday so if we have a daily imbalance here tap in and then potentially go towards the liquidity if not then we have to adapt in the meantime of course you can see that we're having a very nice four hourly push within that four hourly push we have this four hourly imbalance and we have also this one just below it uh, but of course this one below it i'm not going to keep because if the market comes all the way back down that's not going to be really good and by that time we should be having a daily imbalance printed already so for monday knowing that we already have usd news uh, but also knowing that we're in a potential day three of a potential imbalance bullish forming i would be patient but i would also not hesitate to take a trade if we actually do have a signal why because right now we're having very clear liquidity target all the way up so the market will potentially be looking to expand past there without losing much time so personally if we have a pullback into this imbalance i would be really happy to take it if we have something on the one hourly time frame already starting to drive higher i will be happy to take it but my overall bias for the day so i is just bullish towards that that monthly high of course it could change this week so don't just be um sing like one-sided right it's gonna go bullish that's it period yes i'm bullish right now but maybe this week is gonna change my mind we might start seeing bearish signs okay open mind always for now bullish potentially waiting for monday to form a daily imbalance and then trading that on tuesday driving the market higher that will be the perfect development for me well, EU is exactly the same as the DXY, but in reverse, again, we were reacting from this monthly bullish imbalance, we failed to actually hold, and right now the market is giving us signs that it wants to potentially go lower. Again, that monthly low is our eventual target, if of course the DXY is also going to persist, but we're getting some very nice momentum. Also, we could also be having a weekly imbalance. So something that I forgot to mention on the DXY is you can see actually this is candle one, candle two. And right now we could be printing candle three of a potential weekly imbalance that is further going to support uh the idea of bullishness now of course if it forms that weekly imbalance this week then even next week could be the week that actually pushes higher but again we cannot really think and forecast that long term but of course you could be aware that uh, there is an invalidation level here so if the market actually crosses this line uh we are not gonna have a weekly imbalance which is not a great sign okay now on the daily time frame we are having this massive imbalance here so again we do not want to see the market actually pull back all the way up there all right so again right now we're having also a daily invalidation level here similar to the dxy so again monday will be tricky i would definitely love to see monday to consolidate to form that bearish imbalance and then to potentially trade that on tuesday going forward now, again, just because we expanded on Friday, right now, Monday could be a little bit tricky. And you can see we just opened and we just started expanding. And I was actually looking for a short trade, but the market started taking all the liquidity levels I had. So firstly, I wanted to target this. It took it out. It took it out. It took out the previous daily high. It took this one. And then eventually it ended up taking out this one. So this is the last liquidity point that we have taken. And the next one that I have is this daily imbalance here that we came very, very, very close to. Very close to. So again, a lot of things could happen. We could potentially rush on Monday to take out this imbalance liquidity and then potentially pull back to form that daily imbalance. That will be great. But of course, that is a little bit hard to forecast. Currently, we have this four hour imbalance. And again, based on what I just said, if the market is going to rush to take some liquidity on Monday, we might have a tap into that imbalance that could drive us into that lower liquidity and then the market to consolidate to print that day three that candle three of a daily imbalance all right so that is kind of a more complex scenario what i'm explaining right here but if i just keep it simple the market is bearish eventual target is going to be all the way that monthly low 
Now, of course, the question is, how are we going to be getting there? And we have to be waiting for price. We have to be waiting for the zones to actually form that are going to show us and also guide us towards that monthly low. For now, I'm going to be working on Monday with this forward zone, maybe even the, the, the one above, and then see if the market is going to continue. If it consolidates on Monday, then I'm going to be focusing on the day days afterwards because we are very likely going to have a bearish move this week. But of course, let's see. Bearish bias. Let's see how it goes. Just very quickly, I forgot to show you my trades this week, which are two nasty break-evens on EU. So the first one was taken on Tuesday. We had a tap of this forward imbalance that was driving us higher. The liquidity was very obvious, which was in the form of that weekly high that we actually eventually swept. That fueled all that massive bearish move. Four hourly tap. I did wait also for this hourly time frame to confirm. And I also did wait for the five minutes to also show me that it wants to shift. So I did enter somewhere here. So this is my, I'm not sure if this is the exact entry, uh, but it is probably the exact entry because as the market then made this push higher, took out the Asian high, took out the previous daily high, and then I got an alert that the market is massively rushing towards my entry, I went break even. And I felt really stupid because exactly 15 minutes afterwards, the market started reversing and actually ended up hitting my take profit. There was actually a one hourly imbalance right here that I that I knew it was there, uh, but I still made the mistake to go break even. It was this one. And then the market actually tapped this hourly imbalance and provided a five minute entry to still trade it higher. But I didn't take this one. So rather pissed about this one. Break even could have been a win. It's OK. The next trade I took was a counter trend trade in which we actually swept on Thursday, the previous daily low. We had this four hourly time frame imbalance that I use for potential targets. So I tried to trade into it in London session, but you can see on London session, there weren't any news. So then US session came in, swept the lows, then it came in into the actual target that I had. And then from there, it actually started dumping. And I was looking to take a trade from here, uh, but the market just again flushed. Unfortunately, it has been hard this week. So this trade here was rather simple. We just took out the previous daily low. We made a train change on the 50 minute with an imbalance. The market came in, rejected. I entered, stop loss below the candle, take profit at that forward imbalance. And I got stopped out of break even on this one. Luckily, this break even actually was, um, was a successful one because it saved me money. And then we did all of this choppiness. And then again, we came into that zone actually, and we just started flushing lower right? We just started flushing lower. There could have been some entries right here, uh, but again, didn't take any. And then on Friday, the market just dumped. It just opened and it just started dumping. You could be trying to chase some of these moves, but again, as it was taking a lot of liquidity, I decided not to engage. So that is my week. Rather <laughs> not nice to break evens. It is what it is. All right, let's have a look at GU, which is in a very interesting situation. We are actually right now getting inside a monthly imbalance. If you remember, GU was the only pair that did not actually pull back towards that imbalance. And right now we are getting inside. So it immediately makes this pair a little bit, I don't want to say low probability, but we could be encountering a lot of um, kind of struggle within that area. Of course, like based on the other pairs, we should be going for that monthly low, but you can see GU is kind of much, I would say slower. You can see EU is kind of very close. It's like 200 pips away from that, but GU is very far away. It's double the size, right? Of course, GU has a bigger pip range, but you get the point. Now on the weekly time frame, we are reacting very nicely again from that weekly imbalance. It took uh, two weeks. First week kind of rejected and second week came in and then swept. And we're printing a very massive uh, bearish engulfing candle here. So again, same story. We are going to be having that weekly invalidation level. So if the market actually does not cross that weekly line, we are going to be having a weekly imbalance. Preferably, I would really love to see this because it's going to confirm that this monthly imbalance is not giving a lot of a reaction, right? But of course, right now we could start expecting it. So of course, we came in on Friday. We came in very bearish into that zone. And again, similar to again to the rest of the pairs, we're going to be having that daily invalidation level. So it's going to be very key to see what Monday is going to do, because if Monday starts to crazily reverse, invalidate the daily imbalance, eventually invalidate the weekly bearish imbalance, that could give us some bullish signs. But again, just based on the overall narrative of the market and the overall sentiment of the dollar, well, it should be going down. 
so let's see gu is starting to turn i'm actually reading some news that it's becoming more and more independent so not linking that much the pound to the dollar and i do see this within price to be honest because um uh, it oftentimes moves differently than eu for example it oftentimes does not correlate to the dollar entirely but of course it's uh, not something that is uh very very important so right now again the most recent error that we can work with is this bearish hourly imbalance so on monday i'm interested to see how it's going to get inside and of course if we're going to be getting any reaction for a short but again keeping aware that the gbp news are starting on tuesday i would prefer for monday to wait to potentially give me that daily bearish imbalance and then to start trading that high probability market going forward from tuesday again we're tapping into that monthly imbalance area so don't be surprised if we get a very big reaction but i have also seen the market sometimes fully disrespect and fully just not really give any reaction from hard time from areas of interest like this because the overall narrative coming from the top here the overall bearish narrative is just too strong that the market doesn't even care to respond from this monthly imbalance so again remember the overall sentiment is bullish dollar and bearish major pairs let's see preferably once again waiting for that daily bearish imbalance to trade from that on tuesday but if monday already goes don't hesitate to get in beautiful development on au so far as well this one has a closer target so we're we are definitely reaching right now for this low uh that is weak why is it weak well because the market tapped into the imbalance with this low it tried to push it failed so then of course that becomes liquidity that is the first area and then of course eventually we can travel all the way down weekly time frame you can see here the weekly candle is not as strong as the other here the invalidation level of a new weekly bearish imbalance is very close so we might not actually create a weekly imbalance and if you also study au it has been quite choppy within the last how many weeks right within the last eight weeks right two months almost it has been choppy now right now with the overall sentiment that is introduced we are having some nice bearishness now right now on the daily we're very nicely expanding the market is very close i mean it's just 20 pips away from liquidity so it could actually open right now during asia and it could actually already run there we're having that fall imbalance to work with we're having one just above it as well right and uh, potentially again we could be forming a new daily imbalance which is something that i really want to see in order to confirm that potential bearishness that is incoming now again after we take out the liquidity we can expect a rebalance so hopefully my plan for au will be monday take liquidity and consolidate form that daily bearish imbalance and then on tuesday tap into it and go lower that is my overall plan let me make this one a little bit thinner all right so that is my plan on au nicely bearish we definitely could be reaching lower we do have uh so then of course after we take out that low we again don't have much to stop price all the way down to that low here why this low well because here we have this imbalance that imbalance is already filled this bullish imbalance already filled and already caused the move so there is nothing really to stop price all the way towards that liquidity here so au very bearish uh, similar to all the pairs we do also have some aussie news this week so it could be very interesting so let's monitor it NZUSD pretty similar to the Aussie however I would even say a little bit more weaker a little bit more bearish which is very nice monthly time frame pushing down again here the target is pretty much again this low dropping to the weekly can we think of another target immediately yes this one looks like a pretty nice target which is a weekly swing low and then apart from that we don't have anything else very nicely again we have to just build the narrative we're having that very nice bearish weekly imbalance the market taps it sweeps last week the previous weekly high and right now we're very massively rejecting so i would expect next week to be also bearish now again here similar to the rest of the pairs we did form that daily imbalance but on friday nothing actually filled the imbalance i had a fanatic member actually taking a beautiful entity short on the one hour time frame because the liquidity was rather clear we had this low right there and we also had on the intraday basis we had also the previous daily low but again right now the last liquidity that we have taken is this low so we could be expecting some sort of a reaction now similar again to all the pairs we are having this daily invalidation line let me know by the way if you don't understand it i might make a video on it uh, but pretty much 
on Monday, we should not see the price trade towards that zone because if it does, then that is going to fail a new bearish imbalance from being created that can potentially be a bullish sign. Okay. Now, on the forward time frame, once again, similar to AU, we do have a lot of zones to work with. Are those zones going to push the market massively lower? Well, the market usually is going to push massively when there are news. And for the NZD, I'm not sure if we have NZD news. We do have mostly Aussie news. They do tend to move together, though. So let's see. Again, the main plan is to actually wait to see what Monday is going to do to hopefully create that daily bearish imbalance and then to potentially just trade it on the way down. All right. Uh, but again, I would not be surprised also because there is a lot of volatility right now in the market. There is a very big selling going on. If the market just doesn't make a pullback and just continues to impose to the downside. So as I keep saying on all the pairs, if you do get that bearish setup, even on a Monday, don't hesitate to strike. Again, don't hold it all the way to the monthly low, right? Just take your 2R, take your 3R, call it a day, and then come back tomorrow. That is NZUSD, bearish, similar to the rest of the pairs. Well, 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 GOAT, I mean, it is massively pushing towards all-time highs. So as I keep telling you, usually this is hard price action to be working with. Now, we have a weekly bullish imbalance, which is incredible because this can actually act as an area that we can tap and go higher from, but at the same time, it can act as a potential draw on liquidity, which we can actually target at the beginning of this week. Do I see the market actually opening and continuing to push higher? Could be, but judging by this wick here on the weekly time frame, there is a lot of rejection coming from the top. And also judging by the overall sentiment of the market, well, gold could potentially go lower. On the daily time frame, we do not have anything to work with. We don't have any, well, we did have an imbalance here that the market actually tapped. Uh, tapped here on Wednesday, it responded. So very good. So hopefully some of you maybe took a long from here. It actually looks pretty good. And then, of course, on Friday, we massively rejected that. I do believe it's printing. A, yes, I was going to say it's printing a fully bearish imbalance. There it is. So for gold, I'm going to share with you a counter trend trade idea. The first kind of very recent low. Again, go for the long hanging fruits. This is going to be the first target in the form of this fully low. What I would love to see is for the market to tap inside this fully zone and then go into the weekly. And then as we go into the weekly, it's still too early to say. All right, we can be coming in very bearish with massive daily bearish imbalances that could signify the market could be in a potential reversal. Um, but of course, as we come inside, then it's a whole new story. We have to be looking for signs whether the market is actually going to go bullish. So I'm not going to call that. I am personally right now calling this little short here, tapping into this forward zone, driving us into the weekly imbalance. And then from there, we have to see what is going on. So if you can take any shorts towards that area, that will be nice. I do believe uh, it's um, it's an easy target and it's uh, an overall confluent setup based on the sentiment of the market, that bullish dollar and bearish everything else. Gold, again, is usually its own kind of asset. So again, you can see the, the DXY is going down. Sorry, the DXY is going up. This one should be going down, but it's overall going higher, right? That's gold. But right now, based on this very recent change of sentiment, I do expect for it to potentially pull back a little bit. And my main target is going to be that weekly imbalance. So let's see if that idea actually comes to fruition. USDJPY continuing to push higher. And in fact, I read somewhere that we are reaching a 30 plus year highs. Now on Forex.com, I actually don't have the data. So maybe we have to check out um, another another provider but as you can see we haven't been at these highs really yeah that's actually for true like since the 1990s we haven't really been at this price right here so uh it's it's big things it's very big things that we're actually doing on the yen right now um this makes it a little bit hard to trade because if you're reaching such a massive high again it doesn't really matter because this is fresh price action just because we're reaching 34 year highs it's not even 34 19 yeah it is it is um doesn't it doesn't mean that the market is just going to find the top and reverse right now so overall from the narrative we were reacting from that weekly imbalance and just crushing once again these highs now this is very much driven by fundamentals as well just to say because again bank of japan for the first time they removed their negative interest rates and blah 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 but 
I am not a very huge fan of uh, fundamentals. I do eventually want to get into them to really study, to understand like the deeper kind of dynamic of the market. But I'm also a huge believer that the technicals price is always taking into account the news even before the news happened. Because if you think about it, who moves the market? Again, we don't know central banks, um, liquidity providers, and we have even the like even banks that are below the central banks. We think that is the central banks, but there are actually people and there are even dealing desks and stuff like this and uh, clearance firms and stuff like this. Those are the, the, the guys that move the market and they do know where they want to go. So they already show you with price where they actually want to go. And then the news is usually the catalyst for the market actually going. So again, just my two cents. You can prove me wrong, right? Now, here we are currently having a very massive push. It was very choppy here. Again, it was waiting for that news release. We knew where the market is potentially going, but it was waiting for that news release to actually make the move higher. Again, we didn't know. What I'm saying is stupid. We never know what the market is going to do. But again, we were bullish. We had that weekly imbalance. So we had a potential forecast that it could go higher. And it's always beautiful to see when the technicals pretty much align perfectly and then the fundamentals are just the driver. Now, on Friday, we did tap into that daily imbalance. So the market could be continuing higher already on Monday. Um, but mm, not a huge fan of it. Pretty much our liquidity is this high. And on the hourly time frame, it did make an hourly imbalance higher here. It actually tapped it. Beautiful. I mean, that, that is a trade by itself. A little bit late, but that is a trade by itself here. And to potentially drive us into that into that high here so use the jpy i would prefer to trade other jpys this one is right now about to get a little bit choppy so i would like to see maybe some more development maybe if it's gonna go higher to make another imbalance higher on the daily or even on the quality time frame because the quality has been rather choppy and then to potentially look for something right now i would drive my attention to the rest of the jpys but of course i don't like the jpys because they tend to be very um contradiction contradicting to them to their main pair which is like euro usd for euro jpy for example so that is usd end. i do believe we have a very easy target at this high which is going to be of course the previous weekly high the previous daily high after we take this i want to see are we going to continue pushing above it breaking above it and making new imbalances higher or are we going to sweep it and then start coming back lower that is very important to see only time will show us so again Watch is the JPY. Let's see how it goes. And of course, I'm going to update you potentially on Wednesday. Next is Euro JPY. Now, on the monthly time frame, we don't have much to work with this current month. It's still within the previous monthly range. So no major liquidity has been taken. What we did this week is we took out the previous weekly high and the previous weekly low. There is not a strong body closure anywhere. So that doesn't give us a very big sign about where the market is going to go. And now here comes my point. USDJPY is massively bullish. Remember, massively bullish. EuroJPY is in the middle. Why? Well, because of EuroUSD. EuroUSD right now is massively bearish. USDJPY is massively bullish. So, of course, EuroJPY is going to be in the middle. And this is why uh, sometimes we do get setups on the M pairs. Uh, but, of course, they are usually slower because there is a lot of contradiction between the jpy and also the the major usd pair what we did very recently is we took out this low and the market right now massively expanded similar to the rest of the pairs we could be building a new daily imbalance so i would love to see what monday is going to do if monday comes up and crosses this line i'm not interested anymore in this pair i would actually like to see that daily imbalance to be created right now we have this hourly zone to potentially stop price right now to even continue pushing lower or just consolidate we have one above but i'm not gonna draw it because i do not want to see the market come that much above if it does then it could be a reversal from that liquidity but again essentially i would like to see similar thing uh on eu as well daily imbalance to be made tap into it and then to potentially continue lower now keep in mind euro jpy could potentially chop around because use the jpy is super bullish but if USD JPY starts going down and then your USD continues to go down, that is when usually the yen pairs are the best. Okay, so you have to be always, if you're trading a yen pair, 
you always have to monitor its major, right? So Euro USD for Euro JPY. And also you have to monitor USD JPY because that is your DXY, but for the JPY pairs. So that is my opinion on Euro Yen. I am bearish. I would look potentially for Monday to close to show me what it actually wants to do. In the meantime, of course, we could take a little play from that forward imbalance. But again, don't drive for the, for the flow. You can just take a, a very quick scalp right there. So that's Euro Yen. Let's have a look at GBPJPY. Now, similar to EJ, we are still within the previous monthly highs and, and lows range. On the weekly, we swept previous weekly high, we swept previous weekly low. So again, an overall indecision candle, slightly bit bearish. And once again, what I explained on EJ and also on UJ, we're going to have that contradiction between the major pair and of course the, the USDJPY. So what we did here is we just took this liquidity. We're very nicely rejecting. There is a potential for a daily imbalance. Again, this is something that I want to see form if this market is going to potentially continue lower. What I do like is that we are not, we're not taking this high here. We're having this sort of uh, MSS formation, which could mean that the market might want to head lower. But it's just taking this major liquidity. So right now the question is, all right, are we going to actually break below this and then target all the way these lows? Or are we going to sweep this and then target the high? Again, we are going to need a little bit of time. Now, just very recently, we have this forward imbalance that the market is already rejecting. So already even on Monday, we could be looking for some sort of a reaction from this area. But what I do not want to see on Monday is for the market to drive and to fill that daily imbalance, which is potentially going to invalidate the new <clears throat> daily imbalance from forming. Okay, so Monday to preferably just consolidate or maybe even already start selling off. That would be nice. But then potentially I would like to start trading this one on Tuesday. If we have a daily imbalance to confirm the bearish side, uh, I would be really interested to then potentially continue trading it lower uh, because there is nothing to also stop price from trading all the way down. But first of all, we do need to see that the market actually wants to go down. Okay, so that's GJ overall sell bias. It's very important for, for GU to also continue going lower. And it's also very important for USDJPY to potentially sweep and start going lower. That is pretty much your window for taking a very nice and high probability trade on the JPYs. All right, here we are with the indices. Let's start with SPX. Now, again, we're having that uh, recent bearishness, which is very good because, uh, of course, the indices are due for a pullback. Now, on S&P 500, the first imbalance area to rebalance we have is this uh, monthly one. So that is pretty much going to be my objective for at least for when the next week starts and within the next couple of days. We're getting very close to there, get very close to there. You can see we had a bullish weekly imbalance. That was the only thing to stop price from actually going lower. The market came and rejected, but then this week shows us that it potentially does not want to hold. So I do believe we have an easy target towards that monthly imbalance. Of course, the sentiment of the indices can all of a sudden change, of course. So don't take this on uh, 100% certainty. Daily time frame, though, I mean... Not sure if you agree with me, but the indices have been a little bit tricky. Now, I also made the decision to not trade indices very actively. Maybe if I see something good, I might take it. But I did try to trade indices. And um, again, for me, it starts, New York Stock Exchange starts from uh, 4.30 p.m. And then I have to stay like until 7 to trade. I don't want this. I'm trading for freedom. I do want to do other things as well. So I ended up actually deciding not to really be focused on indices. So currently on the daily, we don't have much to work with. So we have to make our way to the 40 time frame. That was also rather consolidative. If you actually look at it, the overall flow has been bearish. If you look in terms of like a macro structure, but we kept having like imbalances lower then imbalances higher then higher then lower then higher here. But then you constantly have to be monitoring what is holding and what is failing. So yet again on Friday, we did open and then we just dropped crazily and we're currently just taking out this low. Closed also with a very nice body close. That is always good. And the only area that we have to work with right now is this hourly zone here. Now, can we reach a little bit higher? I don't think it makes sense to reach all the way higher. I personally don't like this. So for example, here we had that massive drop and the market reached all the way higher, but it was waiting for the news. Then we have this drop again, the market again reaches all the way higher. 
that is usually not a trending market and you can see it of course within the daily that it turns out into a very big consolidation so what i would like to see already starting on monday is a flush right and then to simply guide us into that monthly imbalance and then from there we simply have to see what is going to happen i'm very likely also going to start dollar cost averaging on my uh s s p 500 holdings which has which is pretty much my biggest positions of assets in terms of net worth as well so very good time to actually be following that bearishness and to start putting money in the stock market so that's xpx short-term bearishness potentially looking at that quality bearish imbalance let's have a look at nasdaq rather similar to spx we're getting very close to that monthly imbalance which is pretty much our draw on liquidity after this monthly imbalance of course we have the next one so of course we have to be patient and really wait to see is the market going to tap and hold from this one or is it going to break it and then this is gonna drive us into the lower one so we could be having a nice bearish move but of course that truly depends dropping to the weekly time frame again nasdaq i hope you agree with me it has been choppy for for quite some time for quite some time is it because it's reaching a top who knows who knows but then it dropped oh man i just saw this i'm, I'm not monitoring by the way then this is on a daily basis and when i just saw this it was just like oh you know the 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 um, there is a little bit of a meme oh brother what is this you don't want to trade this dropping like nothing to extract from the daily absolutely nothing i mean the liquidity is pretty much these lows here and uh, then the next liquidity is going to be overall that monthly imbalance dropping on the 4h like look at this like move down move up goes down goes up right now goes down so the very last th this is just a consolidation so I can say based on the very recent things that are happening that we could potentially go lower and I will be looking for something like this, okay, overall short buys, but this is just solely based on sentiment. This price action, I don't like it. At least SPX is breaking a low and it's slightly bit trendier than NAS. NAS is madness. So again, guys, be careful with NAS. Uh, learn how to pick your instruments better as well so if you are from the us and if you're trading futures and if you're trading uh, indices uh then of course you you have those the, the three ones right nas us 30 and um, spx learn to pick the best one right now nas definitely not from the best ones probably because uh this is the tech index and then the and the majority of those companies are actually still bullish but there are some that are actually falling so if we start getting companies like Apple, Microsoft, Nvidia, and then stuff like this starting to drop, then Nasdaq could potentially make a move. I do believe we're having um um uh, oh man, just got out of my what is it called? Well, the earning reports. Sorry. So we do have earning reports right now incoming potentially. So that could be the cause of the indices and also Nasdaq starting to move. So let's wait let's have a look at dax now with dax i have been having a battle trying to trade it and i think i'm actually gonna stop and just concentrate on uh, forex this one is very unpredictable it sometimes it just massively moves in london sometimes it chops and moves in new york sometimes it's, it's super unpredictable uh it, it's very nice though for london traders now we're having a, so far a very nice bearish month so far we are getting close to also invalidating a new monthly bullish imbalance we, and then pretty much this makes our draw on liquidity that lower monthly bullish imbalance on the weekly time frame if you have a look we had that weekly bullish imbalance that potentially should have stopped price and pushed it higher but no this week confirms to us that we don't want to stop there we want to actually continue going lower on the weekly time frame we could also have a weekly imbalance if the market does not cross this line so let's actually take note of it and then on the daily time frame the daily time frame has been choppy right i actually did look to short the market here we printed that massive candle and the next day took out the load and the next day chop it it's just tricky and i i usually uh take note of all the trades that i missed on a daily basis i usually get a lot of missed trades on eu gu like the forex pairs but on the on DAX, it's very hard to even get like missed trades, something that I could have taken. On the daily time frame, we don't have any imbalances to work with. 
um so that is not very great and then we drop to the quality time frame and yeah we have that similar development like we have on spx an overall downtrend but it's very tricky it goes down right then no imbalances here on the foh then no imbalances here then all of a sudden it comes up it sweeps something and then it started to drop lower right now we just took out that liquidity zone this low we do have that very tiny fall imbalance we have also one just above it so i would personally wait for some more price action i would also love to see daily imbalances to go lower because i think that is when dax um works the best when you have a daily zone because if you're on the lower time frame on the intraday it's uh very nasty it's, it's very fast it's, it's either not going to give you a setup or it's going to give you a stop loss right it's very very funny so that is dax overall bearish i would like to see a uh, more expansion going towards the downside and preferably like faster and clearer price action on the quality time frame but overall bearish us 30 has been the most bearish index i do believe that i mentioned that a couple of uh, outlooks before it was the first one that actually started to respect daily bearish order flow and right now is it is the first one to start tapping into a monthly imbalance so very very interesting now here we have this high and uh, essentially i don't really want to see the market start pushing massively below this high okay uh so again a very nice pullback would be again seven or eight percent to ten percent that will be a pretty big all right but i don't want to see more than that if of course uh, that index is going to continue higher it is also the first index that is forming a weekly imbalance so rather bearish right there but right now we're tapping into a monthly one so we're gonna have a little bit of a supply and demand sandwich here on the daily you saw this we have this daily bearish imbalance it tapped in reacted very nicely all right uh didn't we have another one okay i thought we actually tapped two daily imbalances but it doesn't look like the case maybe brokers doing their dirty shit again changing the data uh but also here we don't have bearish daily imbalances tapping exactly right now into this monthly zone so slightly bit 50 50 slightly bit 50 50 but again we took out that uh recent low here and then we have this poverty zone and we also have that poverty zone a little bit higher i would expect some sort of a reaction from this monthly zone to maybe drive us even further to maybe even come to take liquidity not to say um and then we're gonna see are is it going to continue going higher from that monthly zone or is it going to start failing the bullish order flow and then going lower so i am slightly bit skeptical of us 30 due to the only fact that it's tapping into a monthly zone and usually monthly zones again you know are very strong it's the same situation on gu so again let's wait let's see but the overall sentiment of all the indices is bearish again pick your pair pick your index stick to it and of course be aware of how all of them are looking so that you actually manage to pick the best one they're all looking bearish but if you ask me i would pick s p 500 let's recap dxy fully bullish according to me right now going all the way towards that monthly high now it's going to be very tricky to be waiting for new areas of interest we are having a potential daily imbalance on all the major pairs the dxy again let's see if it actually forms it on monday and then of course tuesday wednesday thursday to potentially expand attacking all the liquidity areas that we drew exactly the same for eu we're having a potential weekly and also potential daily imbalance forming which is a great suggestion for bearish order flow so hopefully waiting for that monday to form that bearish daily imbalance and to continue lower on tuesday and wednesday of course monday i will not exclude it from the list because we do have news on monday and the market could already start rocking lower if it goes higher though again guys don't exclude the other situation it could just open it could just start popping higher be aware of everything that could happen and just simply flow with the market same thing with gu the only problem with gu is that we're tapping an unmitigated and retested to say simply monthly imbalance that could cause the market to maybe give a slight reaction so just be aware of this but the weekly candle closed very bearish so let's see how this week is going to develop we could start seeing some bullishness i hope not but let's see aussie dollar exactly the same we're very close to liquidity on aussie dollar and then of course the next liquidity areas that we outlined 
preferably again that daily imbalance to form but you can already start trading it on the four hourly because it's very close to liquidity and i do believe we can actually take liquidity consolidate for the daily imbalance and then continue shorts for the rest of the week uh unlike au that hasn't taken liquidity nzusd is already taken it so in this case i will definitely wait for the daily imbalance to form and then potentially try to trade it in the upcoming days gold i'm calling a little bit of a pullback here uh, towards that weekly imbalance because we don't have anything on the daily to potentially stop price so then of course i would like to be taking a quick short into that weekly overall following that overall sentiment we have with the bullish dollar jpy is not a huge fan i mean usd jpy is fully bullish while ej and gj are bearish so again truly depends on what happens on the majors i would prefer to focus on the majors this week because we also have a lot of usd news and I didn't see any uh, JPY news. Not sure if that's the case. But here we have the indices as well. My favorite index is SPX. It has a very clear draw on liquidity. And it, according to me, has the cleanest bearish structure. So that is going to be my choice. Preferably, I would like to start seeing daily imbalances going lower. But of course, I would love to work with the forwardy as well. NASDAQ, quite choppy. So be careful trading this one. DAX. That is a monster of a boy during London session. So again, you choose whether to trade it. It's also quite bearish. And US 30 is the first index that is actually tapping into a monthly imbalance. So that decreases the probability because we can expect a bigger pullback. So if you ask me, I'm going to pick SPX. So that is for me, traders. Let me know how was your week. Let me know how you performed. Let me know if you managed to catch any of these massive flushes. I'm sure some of you did. And I'm going to talk to you on Wednesday. In the meantime, take care, have a great weekend and talk to you soon.